second core truth about positive emotions is that they transform us for the better. Um, they, they bring out the best in us. Now, one uh, interesting fact about all living things, and for all of you sitting here today, while you're sitting here today, new cells are being born within you. Um, scientists that have estimated that on average across all different body systems, you could say that people replace 1% of their cells each day. That's another 1% tomorrow, about 30% by next month, and next season, 100%. That's um, one way of looking at it. Um, now, certainly, that differs across, you know, taste buds change faster than bones. But uh, still, um, on average, we're, we're turning over like that a lot. And, uh, you know, maybe it's no coincidence that it takes three months or so to learn a new habit or to make a lifestyle change. Maybe we need to be teaching our new cells. We can't teach an old cell new tricks, perhaps. Um, but one of the things I think is even more exciting is that the latest science suggests that the pace of cell renewal and the form of cell renewal doesn't just follow some predetermined DNA script, that our emotions affect that level of cellular change. And um, so that's uh, an idea that's completely consistent with uh, the broader lesson within my work is that positive emotions in broadening our awareness or opening up our awareness over time change who we are in the future. Now, so what this suggests is that if we increase our daily diet of positive emotions, we change who we are. We change our, our ways of being in the world in important ways. Now, one of the things that I've come to realize is that changing people's trait or characterological positive emotions can be done, but it's not easy, okay? It's, it's akin to making a lifestyle change. I think the best metaphor for this is moving a river. It's more possible than moving a mountain, but it's not something that you can do just on a whim um, and just, you know, flip a switch and it's changed. It's, it's something that you do with, with continual reinforcement and effort. And with that in mind, um, actually, Sonia Lubomirsky's work suggests that it takes as much uh, willpower, lifestyle change, um, effort, and control as does lowering your cholesterol or losing weight. Okay, so, but with that in mind, m I was very much inspired by some of the newest research on meditation to look at how people might use meditation to elevate trait or characterological positive emotion. And in particular, I've become interested in a, a form of meditation called loving-kindness meditation, sometimes called metta. And what it does is it asks people to cultivate that warm, tender feeling that you already have towards a loved one or even a pet. Um, and really learn to self-generate that emotion and um, direct it towards yourself direct it towards people you normally wouldn't feel that to, a neutral person, or people you have difficulties with, and eventually to direct it to all people and, and sentient beings on Earth. Now, what I've learned from my research on loving-kindness meditation is that positive emotions can change. This is what I call the move the river slide, um, that uh, positive emotions as people learn this technique over the course, these are novice meditators, over the course of eight weeks, their positive emotions subtly shift upwards. It's not a whopping increase, but it's statistically significant and it yields really important changes in these people's lives uh, months later. What we learned is that as people's positive emotions increase, their their day-in, day-out positive emotions that you could describe as their trait positive emotions, um, as they increase, it builds resources. One of the resources that is built is people's mindfulness, their, their ability to stay in the present moment and attend uh, to subtle differences, uh, their close and trusting warm relationships with others are improved over the course of three months. These are things that we measured before they took the meditation workshop and then uh, a couple weeks after it ended, and we see improvements there. We see improvements in people's resilience, their ability to bounce back from difficulties and manage their environmental challenges. 
we also see reductions in people's uh, headaches, aches, pains, stomach pains, so self-reported health symptoms. And in our newest study, we've actually found um, changes in heart rate variability that suggest that we've increased vagal tone. So what I want to argue with this work is that positive emotions uh, transform us for the better. It's like that uh, butterfly coming out of its co cocoon. Um, if we increase our daily diet of positive emotions, we come out three months later being better, stronger, more resilient, more socially connected versions of ourselves. And what I, uh, where I'm going in my um, future work is to look at how that is happening, not just at a level that we recognize in our behaviors that we can self-report on questionnaires, but also how it's changing us at a cellular level, how these um, increases in positive emotions cascade forward and um, literally change the way our uh, genes are transcribed and who, shape who we are at a really fundamental basic level. One thing that is true of all of us, just like all living things, we can all either languish barely holding on to life, or flourish, becoming ripe with uh, beauty and possibility and remarkably resilient to hard times. And one of the things that we found is that the degree to which people experience positive emotions in their lives predicts whether people will be languishing or flourishing. And uh, one way to think of this is that we don't have to get up in the morning and think, I want to languish today or I want to flourish today. We need to be thinking about the micro moments and follow the light of the positive emotions. Um, let positive emotions and positivity light our way to the path of flourishing.